Good morning, class. Good morning, Brother Keith. Hi, I'm Keith Moore, and we welcome you to Faith School. For those of you that attend with us regularly, welcome back. And Faith School is the place where our spirits get fed, where our faith grows stronger, and where we learn how to be overcomers. There is much to learn about faith and living by faith. Uh, for one thing, just like uh, there's uh, in natural development, there are things that you cannot explain to a three-year-old or a four-year-old. You can tell them. You could explain it perfectly. That doesn't mean they understand it. doesn't mean they, they have the perspective or experience to even know what you're talking about. But after they grow and experience some things and develop by the time they're 10, 12, 15, uh, they understand, they, they hear it differently. You could tell them the same thing you told them when they were four, and it meant nothing to them when they were four, but when they're 14, it means a lot to them. And so spiritually, it's that way too. When you're first born again, you're a baby. And so even in the first few years of your development, uh, you might have heard some of the best things in the world, anointed things from the Word, I'm trying to say, and... Um, Yet, uh, they just kind of just, just went right by you. And then um, years later, if you develop, you hear that same thing again, and, and you would say you never heard it before. And yet you did, but you didn't. <laughs> you can hear and not hear. Uh, I know I had the privilege of uh, attending and then later working in uh, the healing school at Brother Kenneth Hagin's ministry. And um, I was able to be there every day on the front row and where he was ministering and speaking. And then later on, a few years later, I actually, part of my job involved taking the tapes from those sessions and reviewing them and, and checking them for some other reasons. And I was watching one of those tapes and Brother Hagin was teaching on something and I was thinking, whoa, glory to God, man, I was seeing some things. And I'm thinking, now hold on, I'm, I should have been there that day. I, why wasn't I there? Uh, and then after a while, the camera panned around, and there I was sitting on the front row. I thought, what? <laughs> I was there, but I didn't hear that. And, but I, if you'd have asked me that day, I thought I did. Mm -hmm. But then I grew. What had happened is I had grown and developed. Now I'm hearing things out of that same message mm -hmm. that was there, but I didn't, I didn't have ears to hear it. So say it out loud. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. For helping me to grow. Me to and giving me ears to hear. And giving me ears to hear. Hallelujah. Father, we do. We ask for utterance. We ask for a development in this. And thank you for your, excuse me, for your guidance and your leading and your help in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Go please, if you would, to uh, Hebrews 3 again. Hebrews chapter 3. Let's continue in our study of overcoming unbelief. Verse 7 he said, the Holy Spirit says today, when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts as Israel did when they rebelled, when they tested me in the wilderness. There your ancestors tested and tried me, tried my patience, this translation said, even though they saw my miracles for 40 years. Verse 15 says it again, today when you hear his voice, don't harden your hearts as Israel did when they rebelled. If we go back to this uh, 16th chapter in Exodus where we've been studying about what happened uh, 16 and 17, at Rephidim in chapter 17, it's called the place of striving and temptation. And this is one of the ins instances that he's referring to there in the New Testament when he, when he says don't harden your heart like they did. Verse 1 they pitched in Rephidim, and there was no water for the people to drink. Verse 2, Wherefore the people did chide 
with Moses and said, give us water that we may drink. It's very important that we don't let ourselves get our eyes on anybody around us and look to them to be our source or put pressure on them to fix our life. That's acting like there's no God. That's acting like you don't have a Savior. Uh, and it's something that people do too much, even in, amongst Christians. And any time you find yourself pressuring people, calling them too many times, asking them too many times about something, uh, looking to them, waiting on them, when are they going to do it, when are they going to do it, you need to get a hold of yourself and say, quit that. Lift, you up, lift your eyes up. Get your eyes off of man. Say it out loud. Nobody's my Savior. Nobody's my Savior. But Jesus. But Jesus. Nobody's, my Nobody's my source. But God. But God. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And the list goes on and on. He, he is my only source. Now he uses all manner of vessels and conduits and channels. But but I must not let my eyes get on anybody that they are going to fix my life. They are going to take care of me from now on. They are going to make everything be able to. No, they can't do it for one thing. They can't. And people can fail you. But God never fails. So they're pressuring him. They said, you've you got to give us water to drink. And he said, that why are you fighting with me? And why are you testing the Lord? And the people thirsted for water and they murmured against Moses and said, what is this that you have brought us out of, out of Egypt to kill us and our children and our cattle with thirst? And Moses cried to the Lord and said, what will I do with this people? They're almost ready to stone me. And that's when he told him, take the rod, go up to the rock, smite it, and the rock came out. And they call the name of that place, verse 7, Massa and Meribah, because of the chiding of the children of Israel and because they tempted the Lord, saying, Is the Lord among us or not? You don't want to talk like this. You don't want to think like this. These, when we talk about overcoming unbelief, we need to realize you will be, because of the flesh, you will be tempted to do these kind of things. And you'll have to recognize it when it's going on and catch yourself and say, no, no, I'm not going to do that. You'll be tempted to get your out because the more natural and carnal people are, the more real this is to them. People, people. That's why godless people, they've got no other source but each other, right? They got no other place they will even think to look. Man is the only provider, deliverer, healer there is. And because of that, men pressure each other and pull on each other and dominate each other and take from each other and, and try to force each other. Godless, faithless. Oh, but to get, get God as your source is to get free. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Get free. You don't, you can get free from this pull and this fear, this pressure, this need. You don't have to beg anybody for anything. Oh man, it's liberating. Amen. Hallelujah. You don't have to pull, you don't have to bother anybody or pressure anybody. Faith, say it out loud, faith, faith. puts no pressure, puts no pressure. On, people. on people. Come on, say it again with me. Faith puts no pressure on people. You need to be talking on the other side of this camera now. Say it out loud. Faith puts no pressure on people. We, we read this earlier where uh, uh, with Jacob, you know, and, uh, his, and his wife, uh, Rachel, she was pressuring him. She said, you got to give me kids or I'm going to die. He said, am I God? <laughs> Can you see what it does to relationships? 
He would say, you've got to, you're not giving me what I need. I, I've sat down uh, on the other side of the desk from married couples that were having problems before. And this scenario I've seen over and over again. Well, you're, you're not giving me what I need. And they say, well, you're not giving me what I need. Well, I need this from you. Well, I need this. Both of them are saying, gimme, gimme. Neither is giving. So there's nothing to receive. That's how relationships get in a bad way quickly. And the reason they were so wonderful in the beginning is because the person said, let me give you this. Said, well, let me give you this. No, let me give you. Let me give you. Well, there's plenty to receive because there's giving. Selfishness is the scourge of the earth. And its foundation is unbelief. No faith. When you get in faith, you get in rest. Hallelujah. And some of the simplest phrases are some of the strongest faith. What does it mean? It's going to be okay. Hmm? It'll be fine. God will take care of us. Don't you remember uh, Abram, Abraham, rather, when he was up on the mount to, and his son was asking him, you know, where's the sacrifice? And he, what did he say? God will provide. Did he? Yes. Yeah, he did. Yes. yes, he did. But see, Abraham didn't know. He didn't know there'd be a ram up there in the thicket. He didn't know how God was going to do all of this. But he had faith that this is going to work out. Right? Yes. That God wouldn't just steal from him. God wouldn't just destroy him. He's trusting in the nature of God. He's trusting the character and nature and faithfulness and love of God when he doesn't understand at all why the Lord would ask him to do this. That's strong faith. And it was evidenced in this very, very simple phrase. God will provide. Hallelujah. He'll provide himself. Somebody say it out loud. God will provide. God will provide. Are you going to make it through this time in your life? Huh? Yeah. Not because you're so smart or pretty. Huh? Maybe you are, but that won't be enough on its own. You're going to need more than that. You're going to make it. Hmm? Because of the love of God, the faithfulness of God, the goodness of God, and you're going to trust Him. And it starts by just simple phrases like this. I will trust in the Lord my God. I will rely on you. I will trust in you. I will rest in you. Hallelujah. God's a good God. He'll take care of me. I'll be okay. I'll be better than okay. Hallelujah. We're not just going to survive. We're going to win big. We're, we're overcoming. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Even when you don't have a clue how that could be, when you affirm that it is and will be, you are honoring your God. Amen. You're honoring Him. He hears those words, that vote of confidence in Him, when you don't understand. So don't hesitate to voice it. Don't hesitate to express it. And there are times you need to say it in front of other people too. Even when they don't believe. <laughs> huh? <laughs> there are times you need to speak right up. And, you know, I, I, I do. I'm, I'm a minister, and, but I don't try to push things, you know, down strangers' throats. But at the same time, I'm not ashamed. I'm not, I'm not afraid. I'm not ashamed. And there are times I'll speak right up. People look at you like, what are you talking about? <laughs> God. Oh, you're one of them. You better believe it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and you wish you were one of them. <laughs> We've had so many miracles to testify about when we have testified that God is for us. Hallelujah. He's on my side. And if God's for me, who, what could ever successfully be against me. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. This must be confession day. Every, every, everybody said out loud again. God is for me. God is for me. He's with me. He's with me. And he's for me. And he's for me. And if he's for me. And if he's for me. 
Who can be against me? Who can be against me? Hallelujah. Can you see, that's, that's not being sassy against God, going, are you with me or not? Mm -mm. That's being sassy with God against the enemy. You're going, oh, he's with me, all right. You better get out of the way. He's with me, yeah. Yeah, he's with me. And if he's with me, who can be against me? Nobody successfully. Nobody's bigger than him. Nobody that can overcome him. That... Quickness to believe and affirm faith is the opposite of what we're reading here, which was a quickness to strive, to argue, argue. You'll see that people wind up yielding to spirits, being so challenging and argumentative about things. You, you lose perspective because the argument many times is rooted in a pride of I am right instead of what is right. <laughs> I am right. Go with me to 1 Samuel, please, the 15th chapter. Let's look at a, an example of this. It is so foolish to act like you know more than you do because it's going to be shown up at some point. <laughs> Here we have a situation where Saul is king of God's people, and the prophet Samuel, by the Lord's command, has given him an instruction in verse chapter 15, verse 3, go smite Amalek, utterly destroy all they have, don't spare anything. He's talking about total, wipe out everything. And there were Reasons why. Verse 9, But Saul and the people spared Agag and the best of the sheep and the oxen and the fatlings and the lambs, all that was good, and would not utterly destroy them. But everything that was vile and refused, they destroyed that. Didn't do what God told them to do. The word of the Lord came to Samuel and he said, It repents me that I have set up Saul to be king. For he has turned back from following me and has not performed my commandments. And it grieved Samuel, and he cried to the Lord all night. Samuel was the one that anointed him king. And uh, he realizes how displeased the Lord is with him. It's not the end, though. What so many people don't, have not understood, it's not just what you do. It's what you do last. It's what you do after. It's what you do in the end. Because God's a merciful, gracious God who will accept repentance. If you are a correctable person. Saul was not. Samuel rose up early, verse 12, and verse 13. Samuel came to Saul and Saul said to him, Blessed be thou of the Lord, I have performed the commandment of the Lord. Had he? No. no. Did he know he hadn't? Mm -hmm. He didn't? Yeah, he knew it. We see later that his pride is mentioned. And also fear. And this is with so many folks. So many insecurities. And pride and fear results in lying hiding, misrepresenting. But the problem with that is the proud get resisted. They don't get help. In order to get help, you've got to humble yourself. And humility involves honesty with yourself and with others. Samuel said, well, what is this bleeding of the sheep in my ears and this lowing of oxen? What's all this uh, livestock I'm hearing? And Saul said, well, they, <laughs> would be funny if it wasn't so serious, they have brought them uh, from the Amalekites, for the people spared the best of the sheep. Well, who's in charge around here? He's in charge. The people spared the best of the sheep and oxen to sacrifice to the Lord your God, and the rest we have utterly destroyed. Samuel said to Saul, uh, stay, be still, and let me tell you what the Lord told me last night. He said, all right, say it. 
He said, when you were little in your own sight, weren't you made the head of the tribes of Israel and the Lord anointed you king over Israel? And the Lord sent you on this journey and told you, go utterly destroy. Why did you not obey the voice of the Lord and fly upon the spoil and did evil in the sight of the Lord? And here's where it really went wrong. Saul said to Samuel, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. Now, why am I reading this passage? Because what we've seen all week and even prior to this is how the Lord said, this is a stiff-necked people. Hmm? And what does our text keep telling us, what, three times in one chapter? Don't harden your heart. Is that what he's doing right here? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. When you're confronted with revelation and realization that you've missed it, you'll do one of two things. You'll humble yourself and acknowledge the truth, repent, or you can harden yourself and reject it and resist. Is that what he's doing? And see, this is not, this is not about not understanding the instructions completely. This is not about minute details that somebody made a mistake on. This is a heart deal. Come on, can you see this? This is a heart He's being dishonest. And here is his elder, the man of God, God chose to anoint him king, to tell the nation who was the king. This is his elder. And this is a man that says, and the Bible said that the whole nation knew Samuel was ordained of God to be a prophet, and none of his words fell to the ground. You talk about a prophet among prophets, is this man right here. And he said to the younger, to, the, to Saul, God spoke to me last night and told me this. And Saul braces himself, gets in his face and says, I did. I did obey the Lord. This is how you wind up missing the promised land. Are y'all with me, class? This is how it can all go wrong to where it, where it could have been fixed, where it doesn't get fixed. Was it time to repent here, yes. class? Huh? Yes. Was it time yes. to hit your knees yes. and go, I, I've sinned. God, forgive me. I, I have, I blew it, didn't I? I am so sorry. I missed God. I missed it. Humble yourself. Be willing to be corrected. Be willing to repent. Be willing to change. And if you'll do that, God gives grace to the humble. Amen. If you humble yourself, grace will flow to you like water. Amen. Hallelujah. Amen. His help, His mercy. He knows how frail we've been. He knows how ignorant we've been. He knows about the pulls and temptations of the flesh. He knew all of it before you ever found out. Right? All he needs is for you to be willing to listen to him. And if he says you missed it, then what do you say? I missed it. Right? Just agree that the Almighty knows something. Just, just, just have some sense. Right? But he didn't. He didn't. He said, I have obeyed the voice of the Lord. And I did go the way the Lord sent me. But you know, I brought Agag back and I've utterly destroyed the Amalekites. The people, you know, they took some spoil. Yeah. Sheep, oxen, chief of the things. But they brought it to sacrifice to the Lord. And, and here is where that phrase came that many have become familiar with. And Samuel said, does the Lord delight as much in burnt offerings and sacrifices as in obeying? The voice of the Lord, behold, to obey is better than sacrifice and to hearken than the fat of rams. For rebellion is as the sin of witchcraft and stubbornness is in as iniquity and idolatry. Because you've rejected the word of the Lord, he has rejected you from being king. He went too far. See, he wasn't just getting in the prophet's face. He was getting in God's face. Telling God he had obeyed. 
unwilling to take any responsibility, unwilling to repent. And that's where we get this phrase, to obey is better than any amount of sacrifice. This is that being stiff-necked. This is that being hardening your heart. And he went too far. By the grace of God, you and I never have to do that. Right? We can live our whole life and not be like this. Say it out loud. Pray the prayer. Father God, I despise this. This defiance. This ungodly, devilish rebellion. I hate it. It's not of you. I don't have to be like that. By your grace, I choose to be willing and obedient and eat the good of the land. I choose to trust you and listen to you and believe you always. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Amen. Well, our time's up again, but how many think this is valuable? To get this settled in your spirit, change your whole life. Praise God. Well, come back with us next week and we'll learn more about faith in God. Really enjoyed being with you again this week. At the end of every week, I like to join faith and speak over our partners. Many of you pray for us, believe with us, sow into us. If you want to find out more about being a partner, there's information on the screen. We were talking today about not being uh, stubborn and where your finances are concerned, you got to watch about being stuck on only one thing and trying to make God provide only that certain way. You want to be open in all your ways. Acknowledge him. Uh, let me pray this over you. Believe this with me. Father God, I open myself. Any other way that you would have me to do things, any other avenue or way, uh, different path, different job, different profession, different way of operating, I'm open to it. I'm willing to make a change. Show me, reveal it to me, confirm it to me. I ask for it in Jesus' name. Lord, I speak over all our partners that have sown into us, and I agree with them, and I say the seed is in the ground, and I speak uh, abundant harvests coming back into their lives just where they need them, just where they desire them. We bless you. We speak increase over you in the name of the head of the church, Jesus. Hallelujah. We love you. We're believing with you. We'll see you again soon back here in Faith School. Thank you for joining us at Faith School. Class is dismissed for today, but you can watch this and other episodes of Faith School free of charge at faithschool.org. For more information, visit our website or call us at 941-702-7390.